What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to be talking about Lego differentials and we've got the four different types uh, that you'll see in this video on the screen at the moment so you can use those part numbers in Brick Owl or Bricklink. All of these also use the 12 tooth bevel gear which is also on the screen at the moment. So both the yellow and the red gears use the same shell casing. They have the same interior gigs but the main difference is the exterior gear that allows the yellow one to be controlled from an angle like this at the side, whereas the red one can be controlled either directly from above or from the side in the same way as the yellow one. The gray gear here can be used directly from or controlled directly from the top and can't use uh, uh, angled gears from the side, whereas the other gray one can only be controlled from a angled side gear. The main difference between the first and the second two is just how robust they are. The uh, first two gears are uh, much, much stronger and the gears won't fall out. The other thing that I've noticed as well, and you might even be able to hear this here, as the uh, red and yellow gears axles, when they click into place, uh, they're much more secure uh, than what I find they are with the dark grey gears on the right. Even when they have their interior gears in place, I find that they are much more prone to falling out and you need to uh, compensate for that in the design of the vehicle. In order to provide a little bit of an example as to how these are used most typically uh, and also one of the other differences that I've noticed from using these, uh, I've got them in the classic uh, frame which uh, they'll nearly always sit in. So the main differences here being that the gears used to drive them are different sizes and that creates a different gear ratio and the other thing worth noting is also just how much friction there is i find that the yellow one will uh, stick a little bit more provides a little bit more friction uh, the red one again a little bit more than the other two the, the, the dark gray type now the other thing with these types of differentials is that if you have two wheels or one wheel off the ground uh, they will spin and the other wheels will not the main point of a differential is to allow the vehicle to turn, so this allows the wheels to move at different speeds. And as is shown on the diagram on screen, uh, if you're turning, one wheel has to move further than the other, and hence the speeds need to be different. This isn't possible if the wheels are directly connected. This is the main type of gear or uh, differential that I use um, most commonly in vehicles. Uh, if I am using some, or building something that's a little bit more uh, heavy duty then I would probably use the red one uh, but this is this is definitely one of the most common gears that you'll find uh, in kits as well. Um, I find the gear the internal gears on this can uh, can fall out under pressure and so um, if you're doing something or using something that's going to apply a lot more pressure then I would recommend using one of the more heavy duty gears which are the yellow or the red ones. This is how they connect together. Uh, it's dead simple to put these together. Uh, you do have to use them in a frame, uh, but once you've got them set up in a basic configuration like this, uh, you can see that uh, they'll be driven by a single drive shaft, and uh, that will move the gears, sorry, move the, the wheels round, and those wheels can move in opposite directions and independent because they're not directly connected. If we hold one wheel, we can turn the other, and um, that allows them to move at different speeds when going around corners. And here we've got a basic uh, setup with a differential at the front, and that is driving uh, the whole vehicle and just being driven by a motor. I've used a uh, large gear and then a smaller gear in order to get a uh, slightly lower speed and a bit more torque. But as you can see, when one of those wheels is lifted off the ground, uh, it won't um, move forwards. And so this is one of the main issues with the standard differential. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, you might like part two of this series where we look at torsion differentials. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos, uh, chuck us a like and subscribe or leave a comment below if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching.